Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we're taking a look today at the Samsung T7 external solid state hard drive. This is the one terabyte version. And if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that we already reviewed the T7 with the fingerprint sensor, but now they've got one without the fingerprint sensor. And I thought it would be good to see if this one performs the same as the more expensive one with the touch device on it. So that's what we're going to explore in this video. Now, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure, this came in free of charge through the Amazon Vine program. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this hard drive is all about. Now, these non-touch drives cost about $20 or $30 less than the touch version. So the one terabyte drive that I have here is about $179. The touch version is 209. The 500 gig drive will run you about $99 and the touch version of that 500 gig variant will run you about 120. So if you don't need that fingerprint sensor, you'll save some money and get a very similar product here. Now it interfaces with your computer via its USB type C port. And one of the things that I like about these Samsung drives is that they give you two different cables in the box. So you get a USB-C to USB-C connector if you've got one of those USB-C ports on your PC, or you can hook it up with this USB-C to USB-A cable. And it's nice that they do this because a lot of hard drive manufacturers give you one of these out of spec adapters to get that interface going to the older USB-A connector. So it was nice to see that uh, Samsung provided that. Now this drive, like the other one, supports uh, the USB Gen 2 standard, which means that it can support the 10 gigabit per second USB-C bus. But if your PC doesn't have a Gen 2 connector, it will run at a lower speed. So when we run our benchmarks in a minute, uh, this PC here is running with a Gen 2 connector and we're going to get the full speed out of the drive. But if you buy this and see slower speeds, then it's likely that your computer has a slower USB port. And it's often hard to know what generation your port is because even some USB-C ports are only running at USB 2 speeds, especially on some of the cheaper computers out there. So you definitely need to consult your product manual before buying. But the good news is that, as you'll see in a minute, these drives do take advantage of that port. And without further ado, let's plug it in and see exactly how it performs. And we'll see if that comes close to what we got out of the more expensive touch version. All right, so we've got the drive now connected up to a Legion 5 laptop from Lenovo. This is their mid-range gaming laptop. And this laptop has USB 3.1 ports on it, including its USB-C port, which means its max bandwidth is 5 gigabits per second and not 10. So hooked up to this laptop, we're getting speeds at about 410 megabytes per second on writes, and the reads are running about the same speed there. Not bad, of course, but I think we can do better. And this is a great example of how even a new computer may not have the fastest port available. So I'm gonna slide in my other Lenovo laptop that has a faster USB-C port. Let's see how the drive does on that. All right, so now we've got the drive connected to a faster port that looks the same on a different laptop. Now this port is a Thunderbolt port, so it supports USB devices like this one in addition to Thunderbolt devices. And for the USB devices that it attaches to, it supports the faster Gen 2 or USB 3.2 standard. And check out the speeds. They're pretty much twice as fast here to give you an idea as to what the max potential is of this drive. So we're getting about 830 megabytes per second, give or take on writes and the reads are running at about 850 megabytes per second. And if you've got the right port, this is what you can expect out of the drive. And incidentally, those speeds are what we also saw out of the touch version of the same drive. So the good news here is that it looks like the only difference between these two devices beyond their price is that one has a fingerprint sensor and the other doesn't, at least insofar as that Blackmagic sequential read and write test is concerned. But I also saw similar results with the crystal disk mark test here, as you can see. Uh, we got similar sequential reads and writes on that test. And you can also see here that the uh, random reads and writes are actually very good on these Samsung SSDs, which makes these great for not only just storing data and maybe doing backups and that sort of thing, but also maybe booting up operating systems and games and other things that might read and write to the disk randomly. And these numbers are almost identical to the numbers we got 
on the touch version. And even though the non-touch version here lacks a fingerprint sensor, it can still be locked down with a password and encrypted. In fact, it runs the same software that the touch version comes with. And all you have to do here is enable the security mode and put a password in, and you can protect this drive in a similar way. But the difference is, is that if you were to plug the drive into an iPad, for example, it's not going to unlock. But if you plug the touch version into an iPad, it will unlock with the fingerprint sensor. And that's the big difference here, is that it's a lot easier to unlock this when you're moving it around to different computers than it is to unlock this one, which only secures itself with the password. And the reason is, is that you have to run software every time you plug this in to unlock it, whereas the fingerprint version just requires a touch after it's initially configured to unlock and gain access to the files. So I think if you are securing things and using that feature quite a bit, uh, the touch version is probably going to be a lot more convenient just because you don't need to load software every time you want to get into the drive and access what's on it. So there you go, some really good performance here out of the non-touch T7, the same performance as the more expensive touch version. And so if you don't need the encryption features, save yourself some money, go with the non-touch one, you'll get the same performance, and I think you'll be very pleased with it, provided your USB port is fast enough to take advantage of the performance that it offers. That's gonna do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters including Gold Level supporters Tom Albrecht, Chris Allegretta, David Hockman, Brian Parker, Mike Patterson, and Bill Pomerantz. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.